Okay guys, for today's scape I have a UNS 3N aquarium prepared, the hardscape, the plants, a little bit of soil and all kind of tools. Without any further ado, let's get started. So the UNS 3N is a lovely small aquarium and what I really like about UNS aquariums, each and every one comes with a custom uh, rubber mat. So, and it fits perfectly. So you don't have to cut it to size. It's already here sitting super nice and snug. Uh, what I really like about the UNES Aquariums is the 45 degree, uh, you know, middled corners. Uh, it's just beautiful, especially if you look, you know, like over the corner, the silicone seal appears almost invisible. My inspiration for this Aquas came originates from a layout I did a couple years ago, probably one of my most prominent, I don't know, famous, popular escapes ever, uh, the UNS 5N Evagumi uh, dry start. And I had this idea to replicate, replicate one of my own escapes. Like I have seen you guys replicating this layout a lot. So what I did, I went to uh, a garden center and I shopped hardscape there just to eliminate this hurdle of, you know, maybe Yuris is having the magic hardscape. So I went there. Uh, ordinary store and I bought this red pagoda stone. Yeah, I would say we, we can start escaping with these rocks I got there. The only thing I did, kind of a modification, the large stone you see here, uh, the part here is missing because I used a hammer, uh, no chisel, just the hammer in my basement and I smashed the stone because it was just too big. So I couldn't find the right medium sized rock. We have a couple small stones and one medium sized rock to be the main stone for this small aquarium. I made it fit, so um, so you can as well. To get started, I'm gonna use about one liter of soil, substrate, and even it out a little bit so I have a nice little cushion in the aquarium for everything to sit on. And I think it might be even, even too little. Uh, so you're gonna get a little bit more. But before I do that, let me go to my shelf and grab one of these. Uh, that's the APT Start. So what that little pouch does, it enhances every soil substrate uh, by adding nutrients and beneficial bacteria to it. So. There we have the content and I'm gonna just sprinkle it in the back of the aquarium. The back mostly because everything is going to be covered by a little bit of uh, soil as well. And that little pouch is for later when the water comes in because here we have some more uh, beneficial bacteria. So I'm gonna keep that for later. Okay, now let me get another scoop of soil. That is covered. One more scoop, ready for later. Okay, now starting with the hardscape, super simple, like I did the last time. Here I have the main stone, and I want the main stone to be most prominent in this layout. And for that, I think, yeah, this is a nice angle. Uh, so it kind of ends here approximately at a two-third line if you want it, golden rule ratio. And yeah, now I'm just going to insert a couple supportive stones underneath. Here we have the first one. And what I do here, I can show you here, they're pointing in different directions. This way I'm creating depth in the layout. Also keeping a little bit of space in the back for myself for some background planting. A nice narrow foreground, you can see here very well. I'm very close to the front glass is gonna give dimension to the layout. You know, it looks immediately a lot bigger than it actually is. So, and because this is a little bit too flat at this moment, I'm gonna insert another rock down here and lift everything up just a tiny little bit. And I'm gonna tilt everything a little bit so it looks natural. Uh, 
Let me check briefly from the front. That looks lovely. So we have a beautiful slope uh, with rocks. You've seen it literally two minutes done. Just alternating the direction, how they lay on. A little bit like what I called like dominoes, you know, once they fall over. And I would like to have another rock in the back sitting here just to add more slope and making it more of a triangular layout. Uh, I think I did something similar in the UNS 5N. And let me check it from the front really quick. I like that. Uh, what I don't like, uh, you can see maybe from the top down, both rocks pointing in the same direction. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna rotate this guy towards the back, check it from the front and yes, instantly more depth. So literally every stone like a snake uh, pointing in a different direction, to the back, to the front, to the back, to the front. That's it. The hardscape is done. Just look at it. That's been four stones and uh, well, because it's not a traditional Iwagumi, we don't have to go for an odd number. The overall composition is pleasing and we can move on. Cool. I have one more stone I would like to use in the front. Uh, the reason for that is it's very, uh, how to say, it's kind of vertical in this space. Uh, obviously, I prepared the hardscape up front uh, because I've been searching for the rocks in the store because I wanted to replicate the layout. So I knew I'm going to need a handful of stones and the composition comes together super natural. There is really very little that, that can go wrong with this composition. So, And this stone I would like to position here in the front, kind of like an experiment, as you can see here. Uh, so it basically creates a little valley here between the two stones. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I think this might create that the substrate can go up in this corner a little bit. So it's going to hold the soil from prevent it from, you know, uh, falling to the foreground and creating too much uh, height in the substrate in the front. So it's going to help keep the substrate in the back, but also just adds a little bit of detail to the otherwise a little bit empty uh, foreground here. And I just would like this side of the aquarium to be a little bit heavier than this side uh, and it's going to accentuate this triangular composition where this side is super heavy and this side is a little bit more open clean foreground clean background everything narrow and is the open space over here now i have a couple more small stones uh, i'm not sure whether i should use them or not uh, my idea was because this stone has a really flat uh, side to just, I don't know, lay a couple of the stones somewhere here on top and give it a little bit of extra texture. And uh, yeah, maybe even put a tiny little one on top here. I know that might look a little bit cheesy, but if you think of the nature somewhere in the uh, Grand Canyon, you have this layered rocks uh, and the red pagoda stone. Um, replicates them beautifully. You have this stacked uh, structures and something like this can go in, can go out. Uh, it's optional. Uh, it's up to you. Just wanted to show you how you can enhance it with a little bit of detail. Um, I'm still not sure whether I should add it in. So just have a look with those details and without those details. So have a quick voting in the comments below whether you want me to add these details or remove them. I can do that afterwards at any time. Once they're in, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to remove them, but still I would use just a little drop of super glue so it can even be removed at a later point. For the simplicity purpose and to keep this video as short as possible for you guys. I'm gonna leave them out for now, but I'm gonna look in your comments. And if you say, hey, Yuris, we wanna see those detailed stones in, that's what I'm gonna do in a follow-up video. Uh, by the way, if you want to see a follow-up video on this uh, build, make sure to be subscribed to this channel because there will be follow-up videos on every build in this nano series. Okay, uh, now let's have a look from the back. Um, I would like to raise the substrate in the back. For that, let's add more soil over there and give it just a gentle brush to make sure 
all the gaps are filled in. Let me check. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Just this side, a little bit more. <clears throat> I don't have a powder type substrate. Usually I probably would use a powder type substrate as a top layer. Oh, you know what guys? This is the exact same thing like with the UNS 5N. Over here, there is like a little gap in between the glass and the rock. So I'm going to insert a stone from the back to seal that up a little bit so that the soil uh, is not coming down. This way I can add more soil in the back. You can see here. And we have a very, a very prominent slope over here going two thirds of the aquarium height. So that is a little bit aggressive, I would say. <laughs> very dynamic, not aggressive. This is dynamic, very dynamic. Nice, I like it. Haven't done one of these in a while. With a triple camera setup, really enjoying it. And we have 30 minutes on the clock. It's cool. So the back is done, the stones are sitting. Do I need to secure the stone? This is the question. So let's give them a little wiggle. Yeah, that stone wiggles a lot. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna secure this stone here in the back, just a tiny little connection with super glue. It's going to be transported at some point. And for that reason, it is always better to have the hardscape secured a little bit because look at this, it's, it's stacked up pretty much quite a lot. So yeah, hopefully you can see it here in the back. Added a little piece of a cotton pad. You know, it's those tiny cotton pads you used to or your significant other eventually is using to remove makeup. That's what they're made for and I'm using them to glue the hardscape, but you can use kitchen towels, to toilet paper, whatever you want. So that piece is connected. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna give it another connection just to make sure things stay in place when I move them around. Over here, I added another. So give it like a few seconds and the stone here on the top, I probably should secure it because it just sits. Yeah, let me show you from this side. Over here in the back, I'm going to insert a little piece. Down there. Just one tiny connection point. And it should secure the rock in place. Uh, yeah. And everything invisible from the front. Awesome. Oh, there I have a little gap where the soil will go to the foreground. Just discovered over here in the back and it's coming down here in between the rocks. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go from the back with super glue and just soak the soil in the back to create a little, how to call it, yeah. It's going to seal the spot because the soil is now going to stick to each other, is not gonna move anywhere. So. And from the front, it's just important to fill in some soil and then it's gonna be good. There's a tiny little cave, I like it. If you remember the previous layout, there was Steve the Gobby. Uh, definitely not gonna introduce a guy like this in this aquarium, but maybe a different type. A bumblebee Gobby, something like that. Uh, I think they look like small aliens. Pufferfish, dwarf puffer, pea pufferfish. I don't know, we're gonna wait until the end of the video or guys drop below which fish you think gonna fit this theme. 
Okay, the foreground, I think I can make use of a little bit more soil. Because that's really very little soil in the front. I would say I recommend like two centimeters. Uh, the UNS logo, you know, the UNS logo should be covered by soil. Then you have enough to add the plants inside. Otherwise, it's gonna be, it's not impossible, but gonna be really difficult to get your plants in the substrate. I mean, you will get them in the substrate, but to make them stay in the substrate, that's gonna be difficult. Let me check. Yep, all good. Just this gap here in between the rocks. And in this area where there is the cave in the back, I'm going to move some soil towards the cave so that there is like a little slope of soil. Okay, I think now we have enough substrate in here. Okay, and the front stone looks a little bit lost. So let me pull it out a little bit because once the ground covering plant is going to grow, it will disappear otherwise. Okay, quick check with the stones. Nothing wiggles, super glue, job done. And let me check it from the front. Yeah, it's cool, I like it. So simple. Those simple scapes, I think, are oftentimes the best. So, let's get to the planting. Um, I have some nice plants, uh, kindly provided by Tropica. Uh, for this build, we have the Helantium tenelum green. Uh, which I'm going to plant somewhere in the back, not in this corner. I want it to stay a little bit more shallow. I mean, it's gonna make it its way there anyway. So basically, Helantium tenelum green, somewhere in the back, it's gonna spread and then try to come to the front. And for the foreground, uh, the Eleocaris mini, uh, now renamed Eleocaris pusilla, but it's a super tiny dwarf hagras anyway. Uh, I have a hackers foreground like in the other build uh, and what is really cool about those tissue culture cups from Tropica liquid medium love it the best invention ever you see here so just remove it from the cup squeeze it out the medium like a sponge and you're ready to go so as for planting using my large pinsets, I don't know, 30 centimeters, uh, they have quite a lot of force. Uh, really like these ones. So what I do with Iliocaris Pocilla, the little trick, uh, there is a core and a belt on the outside. Basically all the runners, you know, uh, growing in the cup. And I like to separate the both because this way it's much easier to create your portions. Once you have the belt, you know, you can just pinch off from the bottom where you have the root sections. This way you don't rip off uh, individual leaves. You will rip off leaves, but less. It's gonna cause less damage to the plant. So basically from the bottom, you pinch off a little portion and then grab it with your tweezers and plant it. So. Starting here on the right side and going to work my way to the front glass. I'm making rather large portions because I have plenty of material here today. So I don't have to budget plans, which is super nice. But for you guys out there, uh, you can create up to 100 portions out of a single tissue culture cup. and. If you want to see how to do it, comment below. 
something like Yoris, we want to see you creating 100 portions out of a single cup on video. One cup, 100 portions. If you want to see it, let me know in the comments below. And 100 portions, more than enough to plant a nano tank. So it could be a one pot uh, Iwagumi, one pot Aquascape. I think my friend George Farmer did that. He used a single cup of Hemianthus Cuba to plant an entire aquarium. It is possible. And I think I have something planned like this. So yeah, just encourage me a little bit in the comments to do it. <laughs> and then it's gonna happen for sure. I have so many more of these nano aquariums coming in the next weeks and months, guys. Really, make sure you're subscribed. I am hyped. I cannot wait to escape them all. And this one here being the first one escaped and now already planted just within 20 minutes or so. Uh, it's just amazing. I've been waiting for so, so long for this project to finally begin. And here we are. Okay, so the belt is all used up now with this core portion. It's basically the same thing. Kind of stretch it a little bit and then pinch off little portions. So, a quick moment of silence. I'm getting really in the zone. <laughs> So I can feel the flow. So when I'm planting, uh, I don't feel any time. I can spend hours separating plants, planting them into substrate. I think the biggest carpeting lawn I ever done was like 100 or 200 pots of Hemianthus Cuba. Uh, it was a giant tank. just all plastered with the uh, Hemianthus Cuba. By the way, it's no longer Hemianthus, it's Micrantimum. Okay, so the first pot is in with quite large portions. Like I told you, uh, this could have been enough for the entire escape, but I'm not budgeting here today. So here we go, cup number two, separating the belt from the core. It's so funny waiting until somebody's going to pick up this uh, naming. <laughs> yeah, let me actually rotate the camera for you so you can see what I'm doing. That's the beauty of this lazy season, rotating plate. Let's continue a little bit here more with the Eleocaris Posilla before we transition to the Helentium Tenelum Green. Yeah, check it from the back. This is where I'm going to transition definitely to the Helentium. And now here on the other side at the top, I want some Eleocaris Mini as well. I'm pretty sure this area is going to be dominated by Helentium sooner or later, but at least I want some Eleocaris Mini to be mixed in between because otherwise it would be a little bit difficult for the Elio Carus Mini to get up here. Okay, so I have one more portion. Where should it go? You know what, guys? I see in the front here where this little cave is. I'm gonna plant just another portion over there. And that's it, two cups of the Elio Carus Posilla. Here we have the Helentium Tenelum Green. Again, liquid medium, loving it. It's so easy, you don't have to wash off the gel medium. Ah, so nice. And yeah, over here you don't have a, a, such a, how to call it, dense carpet, so let me rotate it this for you, so you can see from the back where it goes in. Uh, rather individual plantlets. So they go, I just grab one or two of them, pinch off from the reeds on, just like this. There we have some runners, they're just going to continue growing. 
in the tank. It's a lovely plant. I have it in the UNS60U aquarium and love it. It can go quite tall if you don't trim it. If you trim it, you get the bonsai effect and it grows more compact with shorter leaves. Love the color, creates a lot of runners. So if you don't want the plant to propagate itself all over the aquarium, use something different like Luxa, for example. But I want it to grow everywhere, to blend with the hair grass uh, for a little bit of a wild look. The final portions of the Helantium tenellum green going here in the back of the aquarium. So, and we are done. Voila! Hardscape built and planted. Okay, now I have to give the plants a mist and explain to you how this is going to work because this is going to be a dry start, like the original one. And now comes probably the most important advice in terms of dry starting an aquarium. As you have seen, I haven't used any water in the layout so far, so the soil is completely dry. Uh, I planted dry, I just like planting into dry soil. And now I'm spraying the soil, I'm not filling up water, and I'm definitely not filling up the aquarium by spraying. All I want, I want the soil to get moist. And can you see it in the front? You briefly see it in the front. It's gonna look very nicely in the back here. Let me make sure the camera is in focus for that one. Because the biggest mistake I see, people over watering their dry starts. So I'm first giving everything a quick spray, all the substrate, the plants and the hardscape. And then I'm going to spray a little bit longer on the soil so it gets evenly wet, but not too much. But you see, I'm spraying and the water runs down and starts building up at the bottom. I would say this could be even already enough for this spot because I don't want the water level to go up. The moisture is going to distribute evenly over time, literally like the next day, all the soil is going to be evenly wet. So just give it a good soak from the top until you see those runners, you know, going down towards the bottom. And in the first days, you're going to spray a little bit more often just to make sure there is enough humidity, opening, ventilating it, but you really don't need too much humidity here or too much water. Okay, that's almost empty. Voila. Now let's clean the glass to give you a final look of what we have accomplished today. This is the final result. Uh, we have the hard skip built with the red pagoda stone, soil substrate in, APT start in, planted with Eleocharis pusilla, former Eleocharis mini, some Helantium tenellum green in the back, gonna mix beautifully. Uh, the look I'm trying to achieve, bushy and wild in the back, the Helantium growing slowly to the front, gonna keep the Eleocharis shallow in the front. So we have the substrate wet enough. As you can see, I still have some air pockets. If you look from the side over here, you can see, still see some air pockets over there, but it's wet enough at the top. Some water went down and the moisture is going to distribute evenly. And th the only thing remaining now is to seal it with a cling film. And done. So, this is sealed with a cling film. What is happening next? This aquarium is going on the shelf uh, into the gallery and I'm pointing there because the gallery is over there. Uh, it's gonna sit on the shelf. I'm going to turn on the light on 100% intensity and keep it for 12 hours per day. On for 12 hours per day. Uh, this is how you do a dry start, a lot of light as strong as you can. Uh, of course, don't put like 200 watt metal halide up here, it's gonna burn the cling film, but if you have, for example, a small ONF light, a small twin star light, a small 
two heroes, whatever, you know, this size LED of the aquarium that kind of sit on the rim here or mounted to the back, something like that. 100% power, full intensity, 12 hours per day. And the first few days I'm going to open every day and give it just a very short misting. This short misting is going to look like this. So I open it. Let's assume that's day two. This is the bottle. That's it. That's it. Just make it a little bit wet, moist. Don't fill in another 200 milliliters of water. Just spray in a little bit. That spray is going to create some airflow. So now you've seen how I built this little aquarium and you know how I'm going to maintain it. But there is one important component missing that can make or break your dry start. So watch this video next to find out what that is.